it's amazing. So I'm ranting. I appreciate him joining us. Larry Pratt of GunOwners.org. Uh, now is the time to go all in, folks, because the counteroffensives are here. But let's first get the good news. Larry Pratt, thanks for joining us. Alex, thank you so much for having me. You made me hungry during that uh, account of all the attack on food. I think I'll go out and buy a hamburger when we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, they're crazy. Uh, no, they're not really crazy. This is all part. Of, I think you're you're pegging it. Uh, they uh, they want to control every possible area of freedom, and they're going after relatively peripheral things as they move in for really key things like speech and the ability to defend the Second Amendment is not going to be long uh, uh, able to stand if we don't stop these Jaspers now. But happily, we, as you alluded to, we, we're making some progress. Uh, a couple of states now have gone ahead and added themselves to the list. I think we now, if I got my count right, have 10 states where you can carry a firearm under your coat in your purse with no permit required whatsoever, not the government's business. And then magically crime goes down, not up. No, uh, you don't even have to tell people not to shoot their eye out or rob a bank. Uh, can you imagine? People seem to know what to do when they have a gun. Um, uh, who would have thought the American people were that intelligent and responsible? Certainly not the elite. <laughs> and we know the criminals aren't going to follow the law anyway, so why not give law-abiding citizens the right to defend themselves? That's always been the question I've had. If the criminals are doing it anyway, we know that the laws on the books are not doing a lick of good, then why exactly do we have these laws? Oh, is it maybe that we're Ill, uh, legally keeping a registration list from the instant background checks that are being done? Oh, surely they wouldn't do that. Surely they wouldn't use the IRS to go after political prisoners. Surely they wouldn't use the Justice Department to release uh, uh, cartel members back to the Mexican cartels so they can murder more people in the Fast and Furious program that they may still be running. Uh, no, 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 no. They wouldn't do anything like that. You, you know, the people that have... Uh, run the Fast and Furious program, actually giving guns, if you will, to criminals, turn around and want to, uh, they're all bothered by whether you or I sell a neighbor a thirty eight revolver. Sure, what about the really? latest where, where it's coming out that they're shipping the guns continually into Mexico, that Fast and Furious is ongoing, and then it's shipped to ISIS and others. That's coming out in mainstream news, and nothing is being done in Congress. Not a lick. Uh, the Congress has become uh, almost totally useless. We are, uh, they are led by men like John Ryan and Mitch McConnell in the House and in the Senate. And these are men with no, uh, no moral uh, courage whatsoever. They uh, simply accede to whatever the president is doing. They have sent him a blank check so that he can run every uh, terrible program he wants against the Constitution. The only people that seem to come uh, become targets of the ire of the Republican establishment are people like Senator Cruz. <laughs> but otherwise, hey, have a nice day. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to get with Larry Pratt here while we have you into this article, Gun Owners of America Claims Victory Over Bloomberg Billions. Obviously, he'll try to come back, but the fact that he threw the most he's ever done in his decade-long crusade against the right to self-defense when he has up to 15 bodyguards himself and lives in armored fortresses that he flies around in jet copters from. Uh, I mean, this guy is literally a piece of work. What do you, uh, I mean, why are you calling this a victory? I mean, I see it as a victory, but flesh that out for folks. Well, the government has presumed for all too long to be the one to decide whether or not you or I can carry a concealed firearm for our own protection. And what these laws are doing, now that they're getting on the books in some 10 states, maybe even 11, have uh, said, no, you don't need our permission. Uh, you're, a, you're an American. You're in America. You can have a gun. Uh, just don't uh, go rob a bank with it. Otherwise, it's none of our business. Have a good day. And I know that explodes liberals' heads and probably some conservatives who just don't know that you can trust uh, uh, people uh, with all that firepower. Turns out uh, uh, that you can. Alaska's had a law like we're talking about for some 10 years 
and their violent crime rate has gone down. Oh, I wonder why. You don't suppose the criminals are worried that they don't, now they don't have the foggiest idea who might have a gun uh, concealed, and it might be lots of people, not just one or two. They don't know. Do you uh, think Bloomberg will keep doubling down, even though year after year he does double down exponentially, and, and it's not working, it's backfiring? Doesn't he understand that as he comes after our guns, that only wakes more people up and only grows the movement to defend the Second Amendment? Well, I think, isn't it the definition of zealotry is that you redouble your efforts of uh, what you were doing that failed? I think it's <laughs> also just... the definition of insanity. Okay, uh, we'll, I'll take that one because I think he's showing himself to be really borderline over the over the line. Uh, he, he is absolutely, and you pointed out his hypocrisy, by the way. It's okay for him to come swarming into a town with 15 guys armed with some guns. I would love to be able to own myself. And by the way, we have footage of that. I mean, that's why Larry says, I mean, there's 15 guys with him with guns when he goes around in different cities on, on video. <laughs> and yet, for you and me, that would be an arrestable offense in some of these cities that he goes into. That's okay if you're Michael Bloomberg. Uh, Don't forget Michael he, Moore. He has six, up to six, who are armed as well. I, well, we have an open challenge to all these uh, uh, hypocrites, starting with the president, that if guns are so bad, tell the Secret Service... Tell whoever your bodyguards are, hey, put those guns away. It only makes violence more likely. It, it's not the way to solve uh, problems. Can't we just talk about them? <laughs> and that's okay for you and me when they're talking to us, but they obviously don't believe that because they don't uh, put that into practice. These people are just really too much. Larry Pratt is our guest, gunowners.org. Larry let me get to this point with you. Uh, most areas of the country have seen crime rates dropping since 1992, as you know, the FBI's own numbers show. But uh, the economy's not doing too well, and there's suddenly a little bit of an uptick in some of the urban centers around the United States. And the big uptick was already the highest crime rate in the world and has a total gun ban, of course, for citizens. Uh, that's Chicago, uh, and now it's doubled in the last year, uh, and the millionaires are actually leaving the city. That's... Uh, that's a story on Drudge today. Millionaires uh, fleeing Chicago over fear of civil unrest. Elite are panicked over potential race riots, crime wave. Why is it areas with victim disarmament that are Democrat run? Why are they literal hell holes the worst in the world? I mean, they are the worst managers on the planet. Why is this you know, happening from your educated view? Well, uh, you've already described what's making it happen. And when I pointed that out some time ago in an article that got into the New York Times and Rolling Stone, uh, they were, uh, the left just went into paroxysms of uh, distress, uh, the idea that somehow they were going to be responsible for race riots. Well, they've already happened. Uh, can you spell Ferguson or Baltimore? Um, and it's going to get worse unless uh, they ease up on their anti-gun policies. And I think you're absolutely right. Chicago is just an explosion waiting to happen. Uh, Rahm Emanuel is, uh, has a very tenuous hold on power there. His gun control policies are a total failure, like they are in every other city where they're applied. Uh, they, but they don't have any alternative because for them, as you know, Alex, this goes well beyond guns as a separate issue. It's all about control. Um, I have a, uh, a weekly one-hour program also on Genesis, uh, uh, In Your Shadow. And the announcer says, and remember, it's not just about gun control. It's about control. That's where these people are coming from. They want to control every single thing we do. That's right. And Can you believe they're actually going after Joel Gilbert? For his movie, um, the Democrats themselves on the Federal Elections Commission want him basically arrested uh, if, if these complaints go through and get picked up. I mean, this is getting crazy. And we're seeing the same thing on the college campuses uh, uh, where uh, a Catholic friar had the kind of middle-age, middle-evil, medieval, um, 
robe on that's very typical. You, if you've seen any movies, you've probably seen one of these guys, even if you've never been by a monastery where they hang out. And and then all of a sudden, uh, some of the little snowflakes at one of our universities, so, oh, ah, the Ku Klux Klan, oh, uh, get in your room and lock the doors and get under the desks. <laughs> it just shows the rampant hysteria they have instilled in these people. And ignorance. If you can't tell the difference between a Ku Klux Klan guy and a Catholic friar, you know what? You're educated. Larry, Larry, pretty... that's all they teach now. I mean, I, I don't usually go out on Halloween, but it's my cousin's birthday <laughs> the day before. And so he wanted to go out on this boat on the river and then go to this condo party. And it was nice people there. But I had at the condo party and at a bar we went to after to hear a lot of music, techno music. I had people walk over and say, are you a Nazi? Now, I was wearing purple pants, a black shirt, and a captain's hat. And they were asking me if I was a Nazi, and it was white people once. And then it looked like an Arab guy the next time. And I'd say, no, man, it's a, it's a captain's hat because we went on a boat ride. And, and it's, it's an easy, and then, then they would double down like, like in my face, like they had power, like like they were gang members or something. So I kind of got in their face and said, man, you're mentally ill, okay? Now quit calling me a Nazi and get out of here, but this is what the social justice warriors do. That's it was incredible. amazing. Oh, it, it's it's just crazy. Um, you, so now we're going to have speech codes, dress codes, all kinds of codes, except not for them. They're the ones that make the rules. But all the uh, we have to tolerate them, but they don't have to tolerate us. Isn't that sweet? It is sweet. Larry, in the five minutes we have left, uh, what are some of the threats we're facing right now? Uh, what's some of the new initiatives they've got to try to disarm us? Well, they're, they're always uh, interested in limiting our access to firearms. One of the biggest is we have this continuing push that there be no guns on private guns on military basis. Just uh, uh, today I was looking at a, an article about one of the, our generals reiterating uh, the call to keep uh, the bases gun-free zones. Well, uh, you know, that's really ignorant. Uh, that, that is making policy out of wishes and unicorns and other fairy tales rather than Looking at what has actually happened, that all of our mass murders, save a couple since 1950, have occurred in gun-free zones. And yet we've got men, I guess women too, that have been in charge of training and leading people in battle. And yet they are so afraid of guns that they don't think that an E-1 should have a firearm on a military base. Really? Well, we've seen this that under Obama where his defense secretaries have everyone disarmed before they go into a base. And and I can see in boot camp not having firearms because you're stressing people. You want people to break who shouldn't be in the military. You want to find out if you've got mental cases uh, who haven't been identified yet. But once you're out of boot camp, if you're going to trust people to fight for their country and do all this, they could kill somebody in a tank. They could steal a rocket launcher. They could whatever. It's stupid. Arm the pilots too. You trust them to fly yeah. a giant airplane. They can kill thousands of people, but you don't trust them to have a gun in the cockpit. It's ridiculous. And so um, they, they have to go through all kinds of elaborate uh, procedures just to go to the bathroom uh, when they're flying one of those planes. No, we've got ourselves into a real pickle. And there are a lot of, uh, particularly co-eds, but uh, people of the younger generation that have been convinced through thing, uh, that guns are bad through things such as the zero tolerance program that so many schools have. And if you see a gun, icky, you know, bad, terrible. Uh, and it's gotten to the point where somebody uh, sees a lightsaber in the parking lot glowing green and they think it's a gun and call the police. Uh, it is really uh, uh, obsessive. What we need to do, I think, is, among other things, call for a return to training students how to use guns. Um, and, and some of the school buildings that are no longer used as school buildings in Washington, D.C., they still have unused uh, uh, firing ranges in the basement of those old now, let's schools. be clear. All over the country, from rural area my dad grew up to, to New York City, but in the last 25, 30 years, they've closed them all. They have shooting ranges in the basements for marksmanship, and they also have archery. They need to bring that back. But, oh, then they wouldn't be afraid of them. Then they'd know proper use. 
like my dad would go to school with his shotgun when he was going hunting with friends after school and stick it in his locker. And, you know, it's a secret that I guess we're not supposed to talk about, but there are still some rural districts in this country where the uh, the students and the parents as well uh, want the students to be able to hunt a rabbit or a squirrel after school on their way home. And, of course, the way you do that is you have your little twenty two rifle uh, along with you. And uh, we don't read about anybody shooting their eye out or uh, going on a shooting rampage. They just go hunting, and that's the end of it. <laughs> Fun. The nanny state hates it. Larry Pratt. Congratulations to you and everybody else at Gun Owners and all the listeners and all the lovers of liberty defending the Second Amendment, which defends all the others uh, in your work and the fact that Bloomberg was defeated all over the country and reversed in his uh, globalist actions. Thank you so much, sir. It is sweet to beat Bloomberg. Thanks for having me uh, on for the celebration. Thank you, sir. Great job to Larry Pratt. Gun Owners I'm Alex Jones. Stay with March. us.